All right, to start off, hello. <laughs> to start off this first lesson in theory, let's take a look at chords, all right? Now, I was trained classically. I was trained to read notes, okay? Bach, Mozart, Brahms, Chopin, all these various composers. You know, you were taught to read notes. You can't really learn those guys by ear. I mean, not a lot of people do that. It's very slow. So I was taught to read notes, and all of a sudden I was put in, you know, and, and I grew up, of course, in a, or a traditional church where they played a lot of hymns. You had four-part harmony, you know. That, that, that typical four-part uh, style of writing. Um, but then I got into a contemporary church, and all of a sudden there were these chord charts. Right? You know what I'm talking about. You'll have a lyric. You'll have, you know, you know, Lord, I lift your name on high. So the first one, G, Lord, I lift your name. So we'll say, Lord, I, there's your G chord. Lord, I lift your name on high. Okay, so you have one, four, five. All right? So I, I had to learn how to read those chord charts. But, you know, that's, that's kind of boring. If I sit there and I go, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. That's kind of boring, all right? So what we, what I do is I, I kind of get into it. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Stuff like that, you know, just throwing in stuff. Well, how, how do you learn how to do that? And well, that was all improvisation, but it takes a little time just working with these chords. But you got to experiment. That's the thing, is I just have spent a ton of time experimenting. And if you love music, which I'm sure you do, otherwise you probably wouldn't be watching this video, you're, you do a lot of experimenting yourself. But first we got to learn some theory, all right? So let's, let's look at the, the, the note C. Okay, let's call C one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so you have eight, which would be a C up here. So a chord is three or more notes played at the same time, but a typical major chord is just one, three, five, C, E, G. Okay, so that would be the one chord if we're in the key of C. Well, the five chord would be a G chord. So you go one, two, three, four, five. See, that's a five chord there. G, 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 or G, B, D. So that's one, three, five in the chord of G. There's now, that's your one in that five chord. Does that make sense? Hopefully. All right. So anyway, that's, that's theory. Well, when you're playing, it's easy to just do these one, four, five things. There's one, four, five. One, four, five. Very common progression. I mean, it's just like used and abused. You know what I'm talking about, okay? But music's music, you know. Who are we to judge a style of music? Though I will say I prefer Bach. <laughs> and uh, of course, I love the Maranatha Praise Band, Matt Redman, uh, you know, Paul Beloche. Is that how you pronounce it? Anyway, of course, I like Nickelback. There's nothing wrong with, you know, uh, picking up some cool things from stuff that, you know, the world is doing. I mean, that's what Christian music is, basically. You know, it's copycat in the world. Uh, but, you know, there are a few Christian artists out there who are trying to be original and, and really uh, write music to the glory of God, just birthed out of their own passion for music. But everything is based upon what we learn. I mean, Bach learned stuff. You know, he, he wrote stuff after hearing Vivaldi's music. Uh, Mozart, you know, when he first heard Bach's uh, some of Bach's fugues, he was like, man, finally, music I can learn from. Uh, Brahms said, man, if people understood the music of Mozart, they wouldn't like mine so much. Even Beethoven said of Mozart, man, Mozart's the greatest of us all. So we're all influenced by music. All right, you ask any great guitarist, you know, who's one of your influences? They'll probably say something like, you know, Jimi Hendrix or Jimmy Page or Eddie Van Halen, Phil Kagey, some of these guys. Um, so, so, you know, none of us is an island, right? We, you don't do, music just, doesn't just pop out of us. It, we, we listen to music that God has given to men. God has given the gift of music and some use it to glorify him, some use it to glorify self. All right. So, but watch what I do here. Okay. To spice it up. I'm going to start say in the key of G and let's, let's go back and use that uh, song, Lord, I lift your name on high. Uh, that's uh, Maranatha praise band, I believe. Lord, I lift your name 
on high. So that's one, four, five. Well, now watch what we can do with that. Lord, I lift your name on high. Right? See what I did? Instead of doing a typical one, four, five, I went one. And then I did a four, but instead of putting the C on the bass, I put the E in that same chord on the bass. Okay, it's what we call a first inversion. First inversion is like this. Here's a C chord, normal C chord, what we call root position. But then a first inversion is this, where it's still the same notes, C, E, and G, except now the E is on the bottom. G is in the middle and C is on top. Second inversion would be G, C, E. Okay, hopefully you're following this stuff. So you experiment. Don't just do typical one, four, five. What you might want to do is, Lord, I lift your name on high. See, now that right there is what we call a suspension. Instead of doing a, the regular five chord, which is a D in the key of G, right? One, one three, five. I went. I took the three and suspended it. It's called a uh, four three suspension, right? So the four has to resolve to the three. Same thing is true in the key of G. Here's one, three, five, G, B, D. Hear that? You take the uh, four or the three and you raise it to a four and then resolve it. Sounds really cool. They've been doing that for years. I mean, centuries, okay? And they still do it in Christian music. Um, just like this one. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. There it was. Okay, so we're in the key of D and we're playing the five chord, which is A, and I take the C sharp and raise it up to a D and then resolve it, okay? I'm forgiven. So notice it doesn't start on a D. I'm forgiven. There's four G, there's five A. No, what we do is put the, instead of the uh, one root position, put an F sharp in the bass instead of the D, right? So we go, I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. Okay, so that's everything. I mean, that, that's a big part of it, spicing stuff up. Don't just settle for root position chords. One, four, five. Okay, or in the key of G. One, four, five. How about... So I just put the uh, third in the bass. Spice the stuff up. It's really cool. And then maybe, like with those chords, do something like this. Like, here's a G chord. Now watch, I'm going to put the third in the bass. So take this and put it in the bass. And then maybe add a two. Isn't that cool? All right. So we'll call that our uh, theory lesson for now. And then uh, after this, after this one, we're going to get into some songs. The next song I'm going to do, uh, you know, you can just, it's a praise and worship song. And you just kind of listen to it and see what you can get out of it. All right. Hope you enjoy these videos. Um, it's all about glorifying God. That's what it's about. My pride may get in the way sometimes. All right. But you know, it's about the worship of Jesus Christ because of what he's done on the cross. That's it. That's what, this, that's what our whole Christian life is about, is giving thanks to Him and encouraging others to do the same. All right?